Hey guys, it's Key here from Kegland and I am so excited to talk about this product. The Firmzilla is finally here. It's a product that we've been working on for literally years. Had a long product development pipeline and it's it costs us so much to get to this stage, so much work, time and effort has gone into this, not just from myself but other people in the office as well. And we're really, really excited to bring you this fermenter because it's a plastic fermenter which pushes the absolute boundaries of what plastic can do. I think it's one of the fermenters which will change the home brewing industry. We've already got orders of these over into the States and Europe and many other corners of the world. So I think no matter where you are, you'll be able to order one of these or at least go to your local distributor and get them to order one for you. So it's a really exciting fermenter as well because it makes a level of fermentation and a level of control uh, and pressure fermentation accessible to guys who may not have been able to afford stainless steel fermenters and pressurizable fermenters in the past. One of the most exciting things is really how the capabilities of this type of plastic fermenter in many respects is even greater than a lot of those uh, stainless steel fermenters which are two or three times the price. We've already had in previous models guys winning award winning beer from you know these types of pressure vessels. And this Firmzilla is just the next stage, and I'm so excited to show you everything that this thing can do. Now this is everything that comes in the basic starter kit. You've got your stainless steel frame. Firstly, you'll notice on the frame, we've upgraded the frame quite a bit. Now it's got double the amount of vertical struts. Now the reason for that is some people said that the previous model was a bit wobbly. Now this is a really sturdy frame, can take a lot of weight. It's the same frame that actually takes even our bigger fermenter. So that's the, uh, the 55 litre model of the Firmzilla. So, um, and you can even stand on it. So I know, uh, you know you can take like over 100 kilos this frame. So it's really, really heavy duty, even though it's made out of quite thin stainless. Um, yeah, it is three or four stainless. The other thing is, uh, we've made quite a lot of changes to the actual body of the fermenter as well. One of the things that took us a long time uh, to get finished was this neck shape. Originally, we actually started off with plastic handles, which were integrated into the neck of the of the preform, so it was actually sort of injection molded into the plastic. But really, the quality didn't really come through, and we did have some breakages in testing, and to be honest, it was an expensive process, but we went back to the drawing board throughout the old tooling, and ended up making stainless steel handles. We thought that really they have a much higher level of quality, and especially for those really big fermenters like the 55 litre we're making, it's quite a lot of weight. We didn't want someone to drop it and crack the handles or break them or whatever. And the stainless steel didn't add that much price, so we've definitely sort of gone with the highest quality finish we put on that one. The other thing is the lids, they're sort of made a similar way with the neck ring, but the lid body itself is quite different, and I'll kind of explain why. Firstly, you've got this radial seal O-ring. Now, some of you guys might remember with the old model, if you took off the lid, you'd find the O-ring would fall off, and that'd be really frustrating, but this O-ring holds itself into place much better, and it seals without as much force to push it down as well, so that's the other nice thing. The other thing on the lid is instantly you'll notice, you know, what are these two posts for? I mean, you've got that one for the, um, the airlock, which comes included in the basic, basic kit, but it's got two coke caps, so these basically are the same thread as a lot of coke caps. Many you can screw on other stuff, things like carbonation caps and stuff like that. So the reason why I've done that is so people can upgrade to the pressure kit. When you noticed with the older models that um, we had a high percentage of people upgrading to the pressure kit because almost everybody who buys one of these fermenters wants to use it under pressure and therefore buys other pressure stuff which uh, enables you to screw ball lock posts on the top of these. So. Uh, now the lids come standard with these threads, which means that uh, you can more cheaply upgrade without having to replace the whole lid assembly. You just need to buy the carbonation caps and stuff like that to upgrade to pressure kit. The other thing is on the underside of the lid, um, you'll notice that there's actually some other available ports here. and We've actually even got little dimples here so they're easy for you to drill out. Let's say if you want to drill them out and put in a cooling coil or you want to put in a thermo well or some of the other accessories we've got in the pipeline, um, you know, we've basically kind of future-proofed the lid so you can do some other stuff with that later as well without having to continually buy new lids. The major thing though is the opening size. So the 120 millimeter opening or five inch uh, is a much bigger opening than you would have had previously. So um, a lot of you guys think, well, is five inch really enough? But look, I can tell you guys, five inch is enough. And I can say that, and you can ask my wife, five inch is enough. But you can get your hand in here pretty easily and you can go like that and get yourself in and clean. So even if you've got a fairly big arm, 
you can still pretty easily clean the inside of the tank without any worries. So that's kind of one of the major features. It gets harder and harder to design pressure vessels to go up to these high pressures that we want to operate at with larger and larger openings. So this took a lot of engineering for us to get to this level where we're really happy with the product. The other thing you'll notice is the dump valve size. And I'll show you this, it's got this big butterfly valve, just like any good quality fermenter should have. So the moment you look at the underside of the dump valve, you can see how big it is. Now this is bigger than even a lot of the stainless steel fermenters. It's got a nice big three inch opening. Now the reason why we did that is because guys are using so much hop and solid material, sometimes, you know, fruits or other stuff they're trying to infuse uh, into the beer and they just so easily get blocked up as soon as you do that. So we wanted to make sure that we over-engineered this, had a really, really big butterfly valve uh, which sealed up really well and um, was, was enough that even you can do those, those beers like Neepers, you know, those New England IPAs, which have, you know, one or 200 grams of hops in there, it still won't block up this butterfly valve. So that was a really important feature, which I think you guys will really enjoy. Now these collection containers are something that we spent quite a lot of time engineering. You'll notice on the uh, original sort of promotional information we had, we didn't have these ports on the side, but something that's really important, and I'll show you why. The container itself is actually made out of uh, Triton plastic, um, so it can take boiling wort. So if you want to put some, uh, I don't know, some, let's say uh, malt extract in here and put some boiling hot wort in here to sort of make your own starter, that's no worries at all. The lid can't take pressure, I should say, but nor should it really need to. I mean, this is the pressure vessel here and this unit can take pressure, so when it's connected, it's fine. Um, but the reason for the ports, getting back to it, is when I screw this on, a lot of people actually using, were using the collection container for, let's say, things like, um, you know, hop additions. So uh, a lot of people found one of the problems with the old one is you'd put hops inside this container, but that would contain a whole lot of oxygen. So when I opened this, and often it would be at the late stage of fermentation where I really don't want to introduce oxygen, that meant all this oxygen would go up and then come into the actual fermenter body itself. So now we've got the same threads on these as the lid. So the same basically like a uh, Coke bottle thread essentially. So I can use these carbonation caps. Gonna, if I screw one of these on like that, um, I can hook up my CO2 on this side loosen this cap off and actually blow CO2 across the uh, collection container and purging out the oxygen in there. So that's a really handy feature. The other thing is, um, yeah, a lot of people were using this for other additions, you know, making a yeast starter in here. You can actually whack this container. It's designed with this shape bottom so it can fit on your magnetic stir plate, have the, have the magnetic stir bar spinning inside this container. And then you can take it straight off that and put your yeast starter into the dump valve and open the valve. So that's really, really handy, not having to transfer yeast from one container to another, especially in those early stages where sanitation is so critical. Um, the other thing that, uh, a little tip I'll give you as well, is we've got like these uh, promo frisbees. You might have a frisbee at home, works quite well, but when you're basically um, connecting or disconnecting this valve, the frisbee's kind of handy just to stick underneath to collect anything, so that can just sort of catch any overflow. Um, these collection containers uh, are, should be a lot neater for you to connect and disconnect because of these ports on the side as well. Some of the guys found that with the older model, um, it, when you had this under pressure, you would shut the actual uh, the gate on here, and then you would end up with still pressure held up inside this collection container. If you unscrewed that, you could have ended up with like a bit of a hop explosion. And some people did sort of notice that when the hops kind of blocked up the valve a bit and then they undid this and they would have that instance. But now with these ports on the side, you can just loosen one of these caps to let, let, let a bit of pressure off, screw it back up, and then you can unscrew it. And you find that sort of another reason why these ports on the side are so handy. One thing I also wanted to add with the collection container is if you're doing and undoing this a bit tight, um, then don't grab onto the posts on the side there. You can potentially damage the posts. So use this tool that we have included in the kit. So just go on like that. And if you really need to get it you know, tighter or loose for some reason, and maybe you're not you know, so strong at it, um, then yeah, definitely use the tool or grab the body itself. Don't grab the posts. Now, if you upgrade to the pressure kit, it includes the floating dip tube with the stainless float and silicon dip tube here, and it includes two of these carbonation caps. They're both identical. So yeah, you'll have to sort of remember which one you put onto the dip tube, or you'll be able to see through the container anyway. 
um, because the gas and liquid posts will be compatible on each. Now these particular ones I'm holding are stainless steel, but we have also some ch cheaper plastic ones for guys who are you know, a little bit more price sensitive. But I just wanted to show you how to fit this up. When we send you this uh, dip tube, the dip tube comes a little bit too long. So if you put that into the thing like that, you can see it just touches the gate and then I've got all this slack on top, which I don't really need. I don't really want it to go, go down that deep and foul up the, uh, the, the butterfly valve. So what I'm gonna do is go like that, pretty much mark the dip tube just at the top edge here like that, so I know it's that long. Then get a tube cutter and trim this down a little bit like so. and then hook this onto the bottom of the carbonation cap like that. Oops, go through the lid first, sorry. <laughs> um, and then just hook this onto the carbonation cap like so. There we go, and that's it. Now some other ex accessories that you might uh, be interested in are the insulated jacket. We've made the insulated jacket a lot easier to go on than the other ones. The old ones had a base which was sewn on and it was really, really hard to get the fermenter in and out of the jacket. But the new ones are really simple. It just drops straight over the top like that and you just push the top down like so to get it in place. The other thing is um, they have a drawstring at the base here. So if you need to uh, you know, tighten up a little bit, just uh, tight, tie up that drawstring. And we found that that actually creates a surprisingly good seal on a flat surface. So if you've got, you know, the flat surface of your garage or something like that, the insulated jacket really does make quite a big difference. And the fact that it doesn't have a floor on it makes it heaps easier to take off, but still seems to sufficiently insulate anyway. The other thing is it's a lot easier to get into the zip. The other ones had two zips on the side and opened like a clamshell. These ones sort of have one zip on this edge and it opens like a book. And the clamshell design, yeah, it didn't, because the base was sewn in, it was quite tricky to kind of maneuver it open and get the fermenter in and out. But this type of book design, it's really easy to get in the side there. The other thing I wanted to mention was also the blow tie kit. Now, most of you guys are probably gonna be using this type of fermenter under pressure. I really think if you wanna get the absolute most out of this type of fermenter, using it under pressure is where you're absolutely gonna, you know, get all that extra control. And uh, for doing things like lagers under pressure, you really, it's hard to beat, to be honest with you. So uh, the blow tie kit, we've hooked up a little bit differently to, we, to what we normally would. And we've got the T-piece in this section here. So we've got the gauge sitting at the uh, top of the T. So this can clip onto one of these posts. And the reason why I've done that is so the blow tie uh, tube can come out this side and then go into a container. So I might use a, uh, a typical blow off tube scenario where I have a container of water or sanitizer and then have a tube going down into that and bubbling off so then I can actually get a visual indication that I've got the fermentation uh, process happening. And then of course, just set the pressure on the uh, front of the blow tie diaphragm here. All right, thanks for that guys. Hope you enjoy using this awesome fermenter. I really think it's gonna be a total game changer for a lot of you home brewers. Look, we've got the larger 55 litre available very soon as well. Um, if you want to hear about any of the other cool new stuff we're coming up with, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, just at the bottom right hand corner there. And the other thing you can do is sign up to our Facebook group. Our Facebook group has a lot of other brewers just like yourself sharing a whole lot of tips on how to get the most out of our gear. So join that, it's got a lot of active members and some really great advice coming out of there. Anyway, till next time, see ya.